Hey, this is Rich Brown with American Warrior Society, one of the co-founders. With me today, I've got contributing author Andrew Keith and uh, one of the plank owners of American Warrior Society, Kevin Weber. Andrew, uh, introduce yourself. Um, I'm Andrew Keith. I'm a current patrol supervisor with a police department here locally. Uh, did four years in the Marine Corps and then got out, went to college, and then became a policeman. Uh, I currently work in the DOE world uh, on the protection side. I did four years in the Marine Corps also. Um, I got out as a law enforcement officer for a little while. Got in the protection side with Department of Energy. So, what well, we're going to talk to you today a little bit about holsters. We're going to talk about the evolution of some of the holsters that we like and some of the holsters we don't. And we want to start it off probably with leather, since that's been around for a while. Uh, General, what do you think about leather holsters? Um, leather. Leather was a good holster and it's really good when it's new, but like you can see, this one's worn out. Mm -hmm. And they tend to, once you draw your firearm, have to use it or whatever, when you go back to, to holster, the holster's closed. So a lot of times they don't retain their shape once they get worn. Uh, I, I completely agree with that. They break down really easy. Uh, weather, wear, uh, if you don't take care of leather, it, it, will, it will certainly fail you. Yeah, so this is a, this is a, Leather holster designed to be worn outside the pants, but like they said, it will collapse. Although it was a good holster in its day, probably long past its prime. Another example, uh, this was a really good holster from, I believe both of these are from Galco, maybe be, maybe close to 20 years ago, and, and they can still be a good holster today, but I won't use them because I prefer Kydex. And uh, you make Kydex holsters, Andrew. What do, you, what do you like about Kydex, man? This is actually the one I, I carry almost on a daily basis whenever you know I'm not on duty. I made this, Kydex is really good. You know, it, it's got some flex to it, unlike some of the thermal injection molded, which is really hard and can break whenever you really apply any pressure to it. Um, that's why I like some of the Phobos designs or whatever, a lot of people would claim, oh, they'll break off the paddle. Well, the reason they break is because they, they just have three little pop rivets here and then they're thermal injection molded. So when you get two hard substances, more a harder plastic tends to be more brittle, if you will. It'll break easier as opposed to flexing and bending. It'll just snap. So a lot of times the weakness of these holsters was at the, the little pop rivets. The Kydex has some flex to it, which is why you get, you know, with this weapon, you get the click when it clicks in. This one that I made, I, I put some, uh, little piece of suede on the back. I get that actually from a ballroom dancing place where they put it on the soles of their shoes, I guess, so they can slide around on the hardwood floor and, and do their dancing stuff. But it actually just keeps a little barrier, a little soft leather barrier between your skin and the holster just to kind of help mitigate some of the sweat and some of the little bit of the discomfort. And I want to come back to something that you mentioned. You mentioned the, the Phobos holsters and the fact that they were in injection molded plastic, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Phobos, I, I'm sorry guys, uh, if you want to reach out to me, rich at AmericanWarriorSociety.com, I'll tell you why I, I hate your products. But uh, this one right here locks up every single time I try to draw the weapon out. So this will be going in the trash when we're done with this video. Uh, Safari Land makes uh, Safari Laminate. I've had a lot of success with Safari Land Laminate products. What about you, Kevin? Uh, you I, have, that? I have some, no, I have some um, Codex here by, by Fury. Um, they're out of Knoxville, Tennessee. They're actually incorporated with the RTI hanger that G-Code has, and I, I can use that on multiple platforms. Um, I remember back in the beginning, uh, everybody's big knock. One of the big knocks on Kydex was ruining your gun finish, and maybe for a different segment, if you're worried about ruining your gun finish, you probably shouldn't be carrying one anyway. So we, we may hit on that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Kydex, Kydex is kind of the, the standard now, but before Kydex came along, uh, I brought this out out of the attic. This is one of the holsters I was running way back in the day and London Bridge Trading Company was was the thing to have at one point believe it or not but we've obviously moved past this. I keep it now for sentimental purposes. Anybody have experience with ankle holsters? Um, I've used one. I carry sometimes I'll carry a revolver as a backup on duty mm -hmm. and I really like I believe that's a Galco ankle glove in it. Yeah, absolutely. I really like those if, if you know if you're a law enforcement officer and you you carry your you want to carry a backup firearm around your ankle. I've been in multiple foot pursuits with those with that on with my um, 340, my Smith and Wesson 340 on mm -hmm. and 
after about three or four days of wearing that, you really don't don't even notice it's there. Like I said, it's survived foot pursuits without you know the gun coming out or the the whole holster coming off. You just have to make sure your your Velcro stays you know in good shape. Yeah. And before we go any further, uh, if there's any sort of sponsorship stuff going on here, I'll let you know. Uh, we have some. Uh, we have some agreements with Safari Land. They've sponsored our show, so I'll get that out. Uh, Work sends us some gear. Love Works products. Shane Hemphill is a good friend. Uh, Galco, we have no agreements with. So you, you make an outstanding product here, and I'm happy to use it and wear it and enjoy it. You That's, ever... That was the big knock on ankle holsters was they were so uncomfortable. You were afraid you were going to lose your firearm and foot pursuit if they've well, satisfied one, those issues. When I used it with this one, because it's got this neoprene boot, it flexes a little bit, so I guess all the force of when you're running doesn't transfer all the way to the Velcro and cause the Velcro to come off. Instead, it flexes a little bit. Looks like they've been able to spread love the weight across oh, a larger yeah. platform. With it, with it squeezing around your boot like that, the only the only negative, if you could even call it a negative, where it's just part of life, is the fact that sometimes it makes your ankle a little warm in the summertime. No, yeah. it's going to see heat. But well, and I think Galco's are done some good with that mitigating this. This is actually sheepskin. If you're looking at this and not familiar with what that is, it's, it's actually sheepskin. It, it cools a little bit, like you said. The only thing I will tell you if you're not used to running an ankle holster is uh, the gun's going to get dirty. You walk across mm -hmm. the ground yeah. parking lot, you're going to have to clean the firearm that you keep in here probably more so than the one that you run around your waist. Um, as far as there are different types, and here in another video we're going to do in a little while, we're going to talk about different positions on which you would wear these holsters because you look at them, some of them are designed inside the waistband and some are outside the waistband. Some are appendix carry, four and five o'clock, and all, and all things in between. Um, anybody ever run one of these? I've run a top of one of those. Um, I, so, I mean, you, sometimes you, you have to change your wardrobe. To what you're what you're wearing if your if your pants are a little snug and you're still trying to get in those Levi's from 1996, <laughs> uh, you're probably not going to work out with those holsters or, or maybe try to get some stretchy waistband stuff. But I think they're a comfortable holster. They're they're, they're something. It's it's a large. It takes up a large bit of real estate. I'm a bigger guy. I don't have a problem with that. So it's. So uh, just for those who don't know, Alien Gear makes a product similar to this. This is a crossbreed, I believe this one is. It's something I set up for Smith & Wesson. Good piece of gear, somebody gave it to me, I tried it out. It's just not designed for me. I like easy on, easy mm -hmm. off. Uh, and putting this on is a little bit more of a challenge for me. So I haven't really enjoyed it, but a lot of people really swear by this. I well, very what? similar to that, I'll, and it's the same idea, is, is this, where you have the, just the two clips and it's inside the waistband also. It doesn't have the leather on it. I, I don't need that particularly. Uh, this is very easy on, easy off for me. Uh, I worked some draw. We, we did some draws with it on, on Wednesday, Andrew and I did. We, we, I was able to work it a little bit. Um, I had it loosened up on me some, uh, but, it, but it wasn't a problem. If you, the key to this, and we'll get into it in a later segment, I hope, is the foundation of anything that you carry is your belt. Uh, a good quality belt is probably just as important as a holster. I agree. So, just maybe maybe more to follow with that later. Well, in the in the evolution of clips, you know, we you talked a little bit about clips, and uh, I know that as a custom Kydex holster maker, you probably can tell us a lot about this. But there are some like this that I really like. It clip, clips onto the belt. I think this is made for probably a, a one. I think you made this holster. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what size belt is that? One and a half. Uh, or one and three quarters. One and three quarters. Then you've got uh, the this kind of uh, product right here. Where it's it's a one and a half. Yeah. This is one and three quarter right here. And you've got the J hooks. The J hooks, you know, I really like those. Your belt slides through there. and You're not limited to the, the side belt. of the belt. You no, can you're not. Kind of you you I don't see here if there's any of the metal, metal, metal clips. Another one with this one, this this looks like it's a uh, tuckable clip. Yes. Which means, you know, you can put your shirt down in there and kind of cover up, you know, the fact that you're, you're carrying a gun if mm -hmm. you have to tuck your shirt in or, or whatever else. So these right here, and I believe the, <clears throat> this Safari Land, it, it uses the same similar, but I've been wearing this for years, so the, uh, the push down. But the reason why some of these don't work, I mean, they, they secure really, really well, but the problem is they print also. You've got this big surface right here. Even though the gun's pressed in nice and tight, uh, the fact that you're wearing this holster may be given away by, by this. But I'll be honest with you, I really don't 
I don't care for print a little bit. What do you think? Uh, state of Tennessee, I don't care one bit to print. We don't have concealed carry permits here. We have to carry permits. Right. Mm -hmm. So printing is not a big concern for me. If I went to a different state, it, it may be. Uh, I mean, from a tactical standpoint, I like to try to keep my gun as hidden as possible. But at the same time, no, I don't think there's a holster out there that is going to completely make your gun disappear in any and all scenarios. You, you know, I mean, if, you, if you're at the grocery store with your wife and you reach up to the top shelf to get something off of there, you probably should be conscious that you may print a little bit. You know, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't keep everything concealed in everything that you're going to possibly do in your entire life. So. Uh I, I think we're thinking the same way there. I'm, I'm not going to open carry. No. My personal yeah. opinion, that's that's inviting trouble, and I don't need to do that. But if if I'm if I if I happen to print and it's mm -hmm. and it's on accident, I, I'm not I'm not overly worried about it. No, I'm not. Either. I agree with you 100. I'm not going to open carry. I'm not bashing anybody that does. If that's your thing, rock on. This is not for me. Uh, one of the holsters that probably the most inexpensive holster on here and. And it, you, some of you may be running around it's with, with a high point in one of these. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember where I got this. This is a Black Hawk, and I'm not. I'm not digging on Black Hawk. They do make probably some, found it in the dumpster. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah somebody's throwaway gun yeah. was laid inside of it. But uh, it's not a. It, it's okay for what it is, it, which is a place to hold your holster and throw it in the, in the sock drawer because that's about all it's going to do. Mm -hmm. If you try to draw with this thing, you'll quickly learn that it'll just come out with the gun. And you'll be standing there with uh, looking like this, which is not cool. Um, anything else on, on holsters before we before we end this segment, guys? Um, not really. I mean, back back to this one. I wouldn't carry this holster unless this was literally all I could afford while I was saving up my money to buy a better holster. I mean, there's there's absolutely. We've already cleared this gun that you saw earlier. There's absolutely nothing holding this gun in here besides gravity. So if you fall, if you get into a scuffle or whatever, if you lean over too far, it just comes right out. There's literally no, there's no friction. There's nothing holding this in. The, the clip is shit. It is thin. It's terrible. It's going to break. It, it's just not, not something if I was going to carry a defensive firearm that I would put my gun. It, it's the, just. Well, the, the only thing that I'll add on to these holsters is. I think this is all a matter of personal preference, but whatever you decide to go with a good quality holster, for me the most important thing is to train with that platform. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that could be understated. No. And, and on that topic, <clears throat> a lot of people seem to, to forget the idea that anytime you're talking about tactics or what I would or would not do, you're, you're making a conscious trade-off. Would you agree with that? That's right. Yeah. You're, it's a compromise. You're, it's a compromise. But one of the things I do want to cover if you're new to farms, man. Yes. Okay, is the fact that if you run the same family of guns, uh, you can normally run the same holster. So I have a Glock 26, which is the subcompact 9mm. You're probably familiar with that. I have a Glock 19 compact and then a Glock 17. Well, I just picked up his gun and I know it's a Glock. A <laughs> Glock. And it fits right, right in that holster. So uh, that is the neat thing about picking that. I, I, I buy one family of guns and they fit into all my holsters just fine. And, and, but you run a little bit different. Uh, well, I run a couple different platforms. That's why, you know, once again, I go to the, a lot of times I'll go to the G-Code platform just because it's interchangeable with their, now they, they have a proprietary RTI hanger, uh, not plugging them anyway. I, I like them. Uh, once you start down that road, it's hard to get off of it. Um, but you can the G code run. if you want us to plug it. <laughs> yeah, by all means, give me a call. We're we're all Marines here. Yeah. Uh, but I, I really like their platforms because if I can go from everyday carry to competition carry to I'm running IDPA or three gun, uh, I want to run a drop leg, something offset. Uh, I I think it was a really genius idea on your and good on you guys. Uh, good on you, and I think you make good gear. So. One final thing, and Kevin had picked this up before we got started. This is a product of. This is version one of Shane Hempel with the Works holsters. If you haven't checked them out, please do so. Great people making great gear. Uh, Shane and I were working on this. I saw him running it at a class that uh, we were teaching out in Montana. And I fell in love with this thing. It's a, he calls it the bisect holster. And you actually run a magazine in. It's at a cant. It's a, made to be worn in the appendix position. It's extremely comfortable wearing it. He's actually upgraded to the version two, which I like. Uh, but this is a really outstanding holster. 
and check them out at works.com. Anything else on holsters, guys, before we, before we move on? No, oh, not the That's all I got. All right. Well, thanks for joining us here at AmericanWarriorSociety.com. We'll see you on the range. <laughs>